Hi everyone, my name is April from Unsolicited Plant Talks and welcome back to our channel. Today we're actually here in our sun-stressing greenhouse. This is one of my favorite greenhouses. I also have mentioned to you guys multiple times how much I love sun-stressing my plants. So this specific greenhouse right here where I'm gonna be showing you guys some examples of the things that I wanted to talk about. This is receiving a lot of bright indirect light and I call it indirect because we do have a shade cloth over it. Even though the shade cloth is not as strong and not as dark, it still does have a shade cloth to negate the amount of heat that this greenhouse produces. This greenhouse is what houses all of our Hoyas that changes color when they get a lot of sun or a lot of sunlight. So a lot of the, the Hoyas here that I'm gonna be showing you guys are going to be Hoyas that have different colored leaves, purple, pink, and yeah, all that good stuff. Growing Hoyas in a bright environment, in a bright, hot environment like this one, comes with some problems that not a lot of Hoya collectors are very familiar with. And I see this question time and time again, whether it's in a public forum or in our inbox, because people have reached out to us asking what's going on with their Hoyas. And I thought I'd make a point to make it this video so that hopefully this will answer some of the questions. And if not, please feel free to continue to message us if you have any questions or concerns about your Hoyas. Your Hoyas don't have to come from us. I'm here to answer all of your questions because I just love talking about plants. So yeah, let's get started with this one. Have you ever found weird spots on your Hoyas thinking that they are fungal, bacterial infection, or virus? Although I can't guarantee you that what you have on your plant specifically is none of those, I would like to shed some light about edema and I, that's what I wanted to talk about today because edema can get a little bit confusing sometimes and it can get a little scary if you're not very familiar with it. Because as we all know, any dots, any blackened spots, any unusual things that we have on our leaves and our Hoya leaves could possibly be fungal. And it actually is very important to know if it is virus or anything that could possibly or potentially infect your other plants. So knowing what you have on your plant could potentially save your plants later on or whatever plants that are growing around it or maybe it's something that you can just control and uh, not worry about it. So hopefully this video can provide some peace of mind when it comes to this kind of problem. The first example that I wanted to show you guys is this Hoya macrophylla that I obtained from Indonesia a while back. Maybe it was 2018 and it was a small plant when I first obtained it and I obtained it with the name macrophylla. As we all know, macrophylla hasn't been seen in circulation for a long time and the ones that we know of as macrophylla is actually latifolia. So this is now called latifolia. It's a specific clone of latifolia. It was open pollinated, so it just looks a little bit different than your typical latifolia, but this is still named as Hoya latifolia. So we're gonna refer to it as Hoya latifolia, the correct name, to avoid any confusion. So this Hoya latifolia that I obtained a while back was really beautiful. It didn't have any blemishes on the leaves. It didn't have any problems. I potted it in this exact same pot and I haven't changed it since then. So this plant has grown, matured, and has been living in the same pot since day one and as you can tell the plant is very mature it's very big it's very thick based off of the stem uh, you can tell that it has been growing for quite some time now all of these spots that you can see right here are not from when i imported it this is grown in my care and seeing spots like this to the untrained eyes you're probably wondering what are causing those and is it something that i have to be worried about or something that i have to treat because i am growing this along with my other beautiful healthy hoyas if this is viral or fungal i wouldn't want it next to my plants because it could possibly infect my plants and spread and end up with a lot of hoyas that i would have to throw away because they're all infected. If you take a look at this Hoya latifolia, do you see those bumpy spots? I actually call these Hoya pimples and that is from inconsistent watering. I'm pretty sure if you have ever looked up Hoya edema or somebody has told you that your plant has damages from edema, they usually would tell you it's from inconsistent watering. But what does inconsistent watering really mean? And I think a lot of people are confused with what's inconsistent. I thought I've been watering consistently. 
all that stuff. So let's go ahead and dive into that. For this specific example, is that even though this plant has thick leaves and can hold a lot of water in their leaves, that doesn't mean that I can just go on for three weeks without watering it and expect it to be alive and healthy and beautiful and lush, right? So what happened with this plant in my personal care is that it has grown so much, but I have never changed my way of watering. So if I am watering twice or three times a week, I have never changed the way I water this plant, even though it's absolutely big and absolutely more mature than everything else. And what inconsistent watering means is that me not watering it enough or soon enough when the plant actually needs water. When it was young, it was okay for me to water about three times, maybe even twice a week, depending on the weather and the, the environment, how hot it is, how much it dries out and all that stuff. This one, because it has grown, obviously it required a lot more energy. It required a lot more water to be able to feed all of the leaves, all of the new leaves and everything else about the plant. Now, because it has grown quite a lot and I didn't change my watering, what happens inside the leaves are the plant cells are shrinking so much that when I finally water it, it's not elastic enough anymore for it to plump back up so that it has a hard time. Now, it doesn't happen to all of the cells, so whenever it shrinks, some of the cells uh, lose their elasticity to where when you water it again and the cells get filled up with water again, they're not elastic enough to open back up and they burst. And when they burst, they create this color, they create this dot, they create this kind of sc a scar on leaves that produces this really unpleasant looking marks on your leaves and unfortunately they're gonna stay there permanently especially if you're growing this plant in a very bright environment and it changes color because of the amount of light that it gets it's going to highlight that specific scar and you're always gonna just happen to see it unfortunately and if you happen to do that over and over then you're gonna see more and more spots pop up here and there because you're gonna have some cells that are having a hard time expanding again. So that's what's causing those. It's not necessarily something to be worried about if you happen to forget to water your plant and it shrunk and then once you watered it, it plumped back up and you see those damaged areas on the leaves. I wouldn't really worry about it. Unfortunately, the damage has been done. There's nothing you could do about it. But if you can just continue to water your plant consistently and by consistently, keeping in mind how fast the plant drinks, then you're gonna be able to prevent that in the future. As far as treating it, there's no treatment. Like I said, it's just a scarring, it's done. You don't have to isolate it from your other plants. You don't have to treat it with anything special. I guess that's a good thing, right? Mistakes happen and it, it happens to best of us. So I wouldn't really worry about it. Now, if you had neglected a plant that has this specific damage on the leaves and you just couldn't stand looking at it, you can just cut the leaves off because new leaves will actually form in the same nodes and new vines are gonna form from the same nodes. So if you don't want to keep staring at it or you don't wanna keep dealing with it, you can just cut off the leaf and just pretty much let it use its energy into producing new vines and new leaves that are gonna be beautiful because you're gonna be taking good care of it from here on. And so yeah, it's, it's no harm, no foul. So with this example, for this specific plant that I'm talking about, what I can do to prevent this from happening in the future is I just have to make sure that I water it a lot more regularly or a lot more often than my other Hoyas that don't have such big root system yet or that are just not as big as this one or does not require as much water as this one. Another thing that you can do to prevent this from happening, let's just say that you just don't have enough time to consistently water it every two days or every three days, but you don't want to have that kind of problem. Another alternative is to up pot the plant. I get asked a lot, when to up pot your Hoya? How do you know that it, it's time for it to be up potted? As you guys know, Hoyas are epiphytes. They don't really live in pots. They don't really live in this kind of environment that we're trying to provide them at home. The reason why we're using pots is we're just trying to use that as the mouth for the plant, meaning like that's how we feed them, that's how we give them water because in the wild, they're up in the trees and they obtain their water from their stems, from their leaves, and just from the moisture and from the humidity. But because we can't provide that, that's why we use pots for them. And that's why it's very important that you give them a very well aerated mix because they're not really used to living in pots. 
Whenever people ask me, how do I know if it's time to up pot my Hoya or when do I have to up pot my Hoya? The answer actually starts from you. The answer would be based off of what kind of care you're given it. So I have plants that have been living in a small pot like that one. It's only a six inch pot and it's very root bound. It's very well rooted. But the reason why I'm not up potting it is because I can still give it care the way it needs to be cared for, meaning I can provide a consistent watering for it. I can provide uh, all the care that it needs and I don't really need to change the pot. Now, if I find myself not being able to water it as often as I need to, then up potting would be a good solution because then the new medium is going to hold a little bit more moisture, a little longer for the plant to be able to drink until it's dry again and it needs to be watered again. The biggest thing that I really would like to emphasize when it comes to up potting your plant is to not choose a pot that is way bigger than your current plant. Just like this one, this plant could easily grow in a five gallon pot if I wanted to because of how big it is. However, because the plant is not used to being in a five gallon pot, I wouldn't just pot this up in a five gallon pot because what's gonna happen is all that extra space and extra medium that is going to be in the same pot as this one is going to hold so much moisture and retain so much water longer than this plant can drink. And sometimes plants just can't gauge how much they have to drink. They're gonna keep drinking. So you're gonna end up rotting your plant and you're gonna be very unhappy. So what I recommend is just finding a size higher than the current pot. Make sure that the new mix is also well aerated. Put your plant in there and don't water as often. So you still wanna gauge how much water your plant is getting. So if you're watering your plant, let's say three times a week, right? And then you up pot it to a bigger pot, you wouldn't wanna to continue to water it three times a week. But you're gonna water maybe twice a week, maybe even once a week, depending on how fast the outer new medium are going to dry. Because of that, your plant's gonna be able to gauge how much and how fast to drink the water and it's not gonna shock them as much. With all that being said, the things that I want you to look for when you find these spots on your plants is that how hot has it been? Have you been watering it a lot? Has it been drying out for too long in between waterings? Should you up the watering? Or if not, if everything's the same or if the soil is staying moist, but you're seeing these spots, then maybe that is fungal, bacterial, and that's probably a sign that you need to put your plant and isolate it in a different area so that it doesn't spread to your other plants. And then you can look into how to properly treat fungal infections on your plants. As for this one, it's as easy as up potting your plant, maybe removing the leaves that are not very nice to the eyes and continue caring for it. This coming winter, remember, Hoyas require different care in different season. Like in hot California days, we have to water a lot more often, maybe even more than three times a week. But during winter, we definitely slow down on watering because we don't want them to be sitting in water for long periods of time to prevent any rot or any problems or diseases that could potentially ruin my plant. There's no hard rule for anything. Just make sure that you just keep this information in mind and apply it based off of your own personal experience. If you are still unsure, you can go ahead and send us an email at support at unsolicitedplanttalks.com and it would really help if you give us a background and give us an idea of what's going on with the plant so we can help you better with the problem that you're facing. So there you have it. With regular watering and proper care, your Hoyas will continue to thrive. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, share it with your friends and family. And let me know down below what you would like to see as well, because there's so many things that I could show you guys and it would really help if you guys give me ideas so that I can prioritize what is needed to be prioritized. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.